how to change oil on a 2013 Ford Raptor. Pop your hood. You're gonna have a hood latch release. Move that and you can open up your hood. Every car is different. Look for your oil cap and always take this off before you even start. Because if you can't take your oil cap off, you can't put oil back in the engine after you've drained it. So, nine times out of ten, right on there, it'll tell you exactly what weight of oil to use. So right here we got 5W20. I place the cap there on the latch so you don't forget about it after you're done going to close the hood. And I always check the oil level before I begin. So on this dipstick, we've got two dots. There's your full and there's your minimum line. And that's what's considered the safe zone with those little lines in there. So as long as you're within that threshold, you're good. Um, but that is exactly full. So we're in the safe zone, I'd say maybe half a quart low. Um, so that's not too bad. Now on these Gen 1 Raptors, they got all kind of skid plate action underneath here. Um, but what's interesting and pretty cool is on this front one here, under the front bumper, there's a little latch hatch here with four screws. These are T40s. You take these off and that's your access to get to the oil filter from underneath. Because when you take that oil filter off, it's got a little catch drain and the oil is gonna drip out of there. So it alleviates the problem in time of having to take off this entire skid plate with these big old bolts and it's very heavy. I've actually painted this entire bottom black. It was actually gray. Sun glare here. There we go. It was actually all actually like shiny silver, um, but I like the all black white look, so it's all black now. And then behind there, you've got your other skid plate. That's where your front differential is, and your whole steering rack, steering rack is. And there's one way back there, and that's your uh, transfer case skid plate. So there's the filter itself. You can see right there, Ford Motorcraft white filter. So this is actually a pretty good view. There's your filter, you're gonna spin that off. And then when you take those four bolts off there, you'll be able to reach up in there, take it off. When you're looking for your drain plug, just remember it's the bottom of the oil pan. So there's ours right there. If you're confused which bolt you're looking for to pull out to drain the oil, just remember if you have rear wheel drive or four wheel drive, the transmission bolts up directly behind the engine. So that means this is the transmission pan. But as you see, there actually isn't a drain, uh, drain plug. So you can't make, make the mistake of draining the transmission fluid. It's actually got a check plug way up here, and um, that's actually a mini dipstick on this model. So that is your drain plug. Go ahead and have your pan ready for the oil that wants to start dripping out of there. There it comes. There you go. Now let that drain. And with the two different ways, I like to do it from the top side versus from underneath, just because I'm tall enough to reach under here. Keep my band wrench on there. Lefty Lucy. And there we go. We've got it broke loose. I can go back underneath now. 
and spin it off by hand and catch it from underneath. Back underneath, reach up in here, start spinning this off. And right here is this catch pan I'm talking about. It's gonna actually drip the oil from the filter so you don't make a mess. Just like that, come on now. Nope, still nothing. There we go. So it's draining from the filter and there it comes. No mess. And so I've got it out now. And when you take it out, keep it upright because when you tip it over, oil is going to come out of there. And I just let it sit in there, let it drain. So I'm going to let this drain for a minute here. And once that starts to stop, I'll be able to go up in here, clean this off. And another very, very important thing to look at, and I'm bringing this up because it's actually happened here. There is a black gasket stuck on there on the oil housing that belongs on the filter. So that filter gasket detached and stuck up here in here. So you have to make sure you check that you got that off. Otherwise you will double gasket the filter. And when you go to start it back up, it's just gonna shoot oil everywhere. So that black gasket right there, I'm gonna get it back out of there. There we go. So here's the new filter. Here's that gasket I'm talking about. There's the old one. So always make sure you got that off the old one before you screw this new one back on there. And you wanna lube this. You'll wanna put this on there dry because it actually is one of the reasons why sometimes that gets stuck on there. Um, so what I do is I take one of my quartz here and I just dribble a few drops in here like that and rub it around the edge here and prime it. I put a little bit down inside there as well. And then you got your new one ready. You just go ahead and take it up in there and you always start it by hand so you don't mess up those threads on the oil filter housing. You'll feel it catch. And then I come back up top. Once I have it hand tightened, put my band wrench back on here and ready tidy. And how do you know when it's on there tight enough? Once you've got it on there pretty tight and you know it takes a lot of force, do another three quarter or quarter turn. And there you go. And over time, when you start this engine up, the oil pressure actually seizes that filter and creates you know a tight fit so you don't want to over tighten it and strip it or damage or dent that oil filter so also when you get your new filter out inspect it for any dents or damage on the exterior because that can create issues with the oil pressure back underneath oil filters tight go ahead and put your drain plug back in after you have inspected it and made sure these threads are nice. The gasket is not damaged. Some people say they replace their drain plug after every oil change. Um, in this case, I don't. This drain plug is in very good condition. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it back in there. And thread it to start. And then grab your ratchet and tighten it back down the rest of the way. So it's on there tight and I can't really move it much. Don't over tighten it. I believe most vehicles in general call for 25 foot pounds torque. I do have a torque wrench. If you don't, you know, if you, you can tell, you know, you don't want to strip it. So now we're ready to put oil back in. Finishing up here, seven quarts. I use Ford Motorcraft, and like I said, the oil cap, 5W20, and I stick with Ford Motorcraft. Make sure you don't forget, put your oil cap back on right away before you start it up. 
dipsticks in there all the way. Start it up. All right. Oil pressure here is gonna be on the far left when I start it up. Watch that oil pressure. Here we go. So we've got oil pressure. Shut it back off. All right, no oil pressure was good. No oil level's good right here at the top. Nice and clean. And the other thing I like to do is lube this dipstick tip. It's a little rubber gasket from seizing up inside here. Because if that gets dry and brittle, you gotta pull this dipstick out. This will break off and you'll have this dipstick stuck in the tube with no handle and no way to pull it out. And you would have to either take this tube off or drill a screw in there and reverse and tap it out. So to avoid anything like that, just keep this nice and lubed with some oil. So it comes in and out just fine when you come in here to check it. And that's all there is to it. All I have to do now is put this skid plate back on there and I'm good to go. So that's how you change oil on a 2013 Ford Raptor.